just trying out the video being blocked and doesn't look like it's working oh yes it is now you're live okay I'm live and I had to change temporary blocked no temporary blocked okay that's gone off now in live video so I'm being blocked from talking about E.D. Mitchell and Alfred Mitchell. What does that tell you? That tells you a lot about Maori and what's happening in this country with corporate fraud. And that's real serious when they can't stand up to the truth and come out in the open. So anyway, the video is still going, action needed. So I'm being interfered with by Facebook when I just start writing and put Alfred Mitchell's name and Eddie Mitchell's name, boom, everything gets wiped out. But I just put another title so that it doesn't look like it comes from something like that until it's published. And then I can carry on talking about it. So, so far, it's going live and not stopping so long as it's not in the heading on the description of the video i can't make a description of it till i'm finished but anyway i want to s tell you that i'm being censored from talking about corporate fraud it's covered up by the police in new zealand by the company's house in britain by the company's house in australia and the company's office in new zealand so this is disclosed information about corporate commercial contract fraud. And I'm going to tell you how these people do it. And then that's one corporate with the biggest fraud case in the world of 17 trillion US dollars stolen from my company Na Atua Iwa Altair Limited, registered in New Zealand and stolen by Eddie Mitchell from his Mitchell Family Trust in Hamilton. So there, I want to disclose that. And we've got witnesses there. Someone who went to school with him and Alfred, Eddie and Alfred Blair Ingram in Ngarawahia. So there, he knows, he warned me, don't ever trust them both. And now this is, he's right about that. And he's witness to what's happened to Philip Tiafutu from Tiamutu. Took his 5,000 cash dollars and never got a receipt for it, what it was going for. But to say it's supposed to go to register the IBC and Na Atua Ewa Altair Limited in Singapore. And never got any information back from him or his barrister here in New Zealand or his Freemason here in New Zealand to put that company Naatua Ewa Ote Limited together in Singapore in under the IBC. I really thought it was International Banking Corporation and it wasn't. It was the International Baptist Church the church are the biggest scumbags in the world of stealing money like the Vatican and the Church of England. Both and the, the um, other churches, the um, Mormon churches and the other churches that are running the scam in New Zealand. Okay, so they are all charities and getting around the tax system you can hear them bragging about not paying tax and everybody else has to pay tax so there we go that's still there it's still running and uh, i'll just keep going because i was going to go on my mobile and talk from there so i can read the book and everything in the book so i'm going to go straight into the book here this one is eddie mitchell and Alfred Mitchell's writ warrant and court case. 
the native magistrate King's Bench court case on corporate fraud of Maryland titles transferred into their trust, the Mitchell Family Trust, then into Singapore, then into Australia where they come from, in New South Wales, Brisbane, and he bred bred or bred something um, accountants there and changed the name to from Mitchell Family Trust to A and E Family Trust or A and E Investment Trust run by that accountants company. So there I should have had that name so I can tell you what it is, or it's in the book anyway, I'll come across it in here, somewhere. So I'm going to read it out, <coughs> here, all the way through and show you the pictures, but it's in colour on my website, you can download it, and it's fully disclosed. Once it's fully disclosed like this, they can't take it to court, it's stuck there in that breadsheet uh, accountants company in Australia. Um, Queensland. So there, there's the book. Look, I'll go and have a look. I'll find that name of that company. So you know, you know, we've got a case running here in the world, the biggest corporate fraud in the world. I don't know, let's see if I know what I've written up there. I should have had these notes ready to go. Um, no, that's Bitcoin that one. No, I've written it down somewhere else. <coughs> okay, let's have a look here. Um, Mitchell Pizza, he's the Bitcoin guy. And then we've got <coughs> A&E Mitchell Investment Trust. Dunbridge Street, Dunbridge Sheet, but Dunbridge Sheet Accountants, Unit 1, 33, Combrey Avenue, Bundle, Queensland, 4217, Australia, created the business as A&E Mitchell, Investment Trust Limited, the trustees for the Mitchell Family Trust, A, B, N, look up the trustees for A and E Investment Trust and the trustees for A, E Investment Trust, admin. So there, that tells you that my company, the 17 trillion, is in that company plus the rest of the trillions. From 1823, King George IV, British Crown, and Te Re Waikato Wharehere Manukau, from Waikato, and uh, he sold the lease for New Zealand country to King William IV, King George IV, 1823, Right till now, 2024, all that period, it's adding up to trillions of royalties that I'm taking back to the native-born people of New Zealand. And this fella stole it. Alfred Mitchell and Evie Mitchell stole the whole lot and stuck it in Queensland to buy real estate with it. I know. And also New Zealand in Queenstown, Hamilton, Tokoroa, Kin Kinlock, Rotorua, and uh, the Mount Manganui, Tauranga, and uh, elsewhere where he has accumulated wealth from stolen property, stolen intellectual property that belongs to me, 50 years of research into Te Rewaikato Wharehere Manukau, and Alfred Mitchell is calling Te Waikato a woman. That's Tainui saying that too. And they're whakapapa 
shows it to in the Maori land court and tribunal. He's calling Te Waikato a woman. And I've got the photo right beside his name and his photo, Alfred Mitchell, with Te Waikato and Hungihika, the two native chiefs beside Alfred's head, to see if you think it looks like a woman or transvestite at 1823 and see if Alfred is telling the truth about what he's saying. Here I've got a photo of him right here. See, you can see there's the two chiefs there and Alfred below calling those Tira Waikato on the right hand side a woman. That's how dumb he is. That's how dumb he is to think you're going to believe him or believe the document. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. I'm going to go through the book afterwards and go right through it. It looks better in colour, but I've only got black and white. So it costs 20 bucks or 19 bucks for the uh, British one, which is 17, 16 pages, and this one, 37 pages. There's Alfred Mitchell there. You see him? Can you see him there? Looks like his brother. And see the picture on the right with those two native chiefs at 1823? Do they look like women? He's calling the one on the right a woman, just to save face about what he's saying. And there's the confederation of chiefs at the bottom on that desk. He doesn't have that. He wasn't given that. All those chiefs there, Machi Tarawa, um, Te Arawa, and uh, Mohi Manakau, and Iri Manakau, Dauri Hongi, and uh, Dan Davis. In there, just to show you that that's my document, not his. He was in the Confederation, but bugger off. Mohi says, now get out of here, let's go. Get away from these fellas because I don't like the look of it. And went to Helensville where we finished off the confederation there where the money is. The Whakaputanga is not where the money is. So there, that's that. I'll just go through the rest of the book. It's hard like this. I wish I had the coloured picture and going through like Andy does and have a screen share. So I don't have screen, I've got screen share, but I don't know how to bring it up. Otherwise I would bring it up on screen. It doesn't have that on here. Live, where's screen share? Hang on, I'll just try and find screen share. If it had screen share, I can go right over it with the colored copy, but I can't see screen share. Action needed. Game. The Maori story that captured the world. That's what I put, and it didn't get blocked by Facebook. I mean, that's when I put Eddie's name and Alfred's name, it blocked it. Do you see? Those two names are covered. They've got a cover up going on with all the corporations are going to get caught. That's what's going to happen here. You're going to get caught. That's why I always go on Facebook or YouTube and see how many they, how many times they blocked me from telling the truth about these pirates on the high sea. Okay, I can't see. I'm looking for the screen share, which is not here. I'll look here. On the right-hand side, open in new, pop out. Default hide, module hide, feedback in settings, settings, stream, view. No, I can't find the share screen. What's this up here? Andy, I don't know what to do here, but I'll, I'll find a better video to do, like, um, um, those other bit sheets and those ones that I can do the videos in 
anyway I'll carry on best I can because it's hard to hold the mic in my hand and hold the book up at the same time so I'm just going to read off from the pa first page on what I'm saying for the big court hearing on the 28th Friday the 28th of June 2024 I don't know where the Marae is we're going to have the native court hearing first up that's what I asked Michelle Coco um, and uh, to have us up first the native court hearing and then the Whakaminga can carry on after that but if Alfred turns up or Georgie Job turns up or Ten Ten or Gerrit Rupa there's going to be a bit of fire flying around about this book and its authenticity and origins of native title to how they got on the land in the first place. Okay? This is straight to Britain, Westminster. They have got United Nations and New South Wales Australia jurisdiction. This is British High Court jurisdiction of authority from King William III of Orange War Powers Act to to liquidate and foreclose and bankrupt anybody playing around with this High Court rule. Okay? So it's a waste of time trying to go to a court to get a court order when there's one right here. Authenticated. And the Crown in Wellington is not a real crown. It's Cindy Kilo's crown on her head, which is nothing to do with the British crown. Updated for Wednesday 19th of June, that has just gone past, for the Marae Crown King William IV Native Magistrate King's Bench Court hearing in Odahu on Zoom online. Native Court, New Zealand number 59, and um, with Andrew Devine in Greece. Here's a, um, a, a English born man and native of England soil there. To declaration proclamation deeds of Admiralty Court Commercial Contract, Altair, New Zealand, Government Native Magistrate King's Bench Court orders. That's what this is. Court list for Unga Te Unga Waka Marae, Marae Crown Native Magistrate King's Bench Court. So we've got a list of people there, we'll go through those. And go into the second page. And we'll go through there and the history of um, Waikato and all the tribes and Iwi and the Hapus and the ones I have chosen out of there that are original. Anything with Nga in it is Iwi. <coughs> okay, you can pick out the Hapus out of it and they are Hapu. This court is all about the hapu, not the iwi, not the New Zealand crown, not the Maori, but the hapu, native. Is HRH Ernest Augustus of Hanover, the rightful true king of the United Kingdom, due to being the senior heir male of King George III and head of the House of Hanover? I say yes. And he is our king of these documents. When George I became king of the United Kingdom, the thrones of the United Kingdom and of Hanover became occupied by the same person. Okay, so I've said this before. I won't go through that, but it's basically saying that King Ernest Augustus I was the legitimate king at the time, the, the, leg the legitimate king of Britain, UK. The queen is not the queen of Britain, UK. She's the queen of England. Soil land and now runaway and abandoned ship. So it leaves us in charge of England and the British crown, UK, to keep our flags together. The British flag and the Confederation of the United Tribes flag. George 
the French region and map on over and go straight on and Kapadu, the Waikato Giants in the time of King George the Fourth and New Zealand head leased land contract and King William the Fourth 1834 flag verbal contract. So I'm stitching up King George the Fourth to Kapadu the Giants of Waikato and King William the Fourth and a verbal contract he made with the natives of New Zealand. New Zealand flag notice 2024 shows an occasion that when Cindy's flag goes up. That's her flag, the flag of New Zealand. It's not the Union Jack anymore, 1902 Union Jack. The government and Cindy Kiro and the Prime Minister Chris Ruxton and his minister Paul Goldsmith revoked the 1902 Union Jack flag as the flag of New Zealand is now gone, but they still fly it. And they still have a Queen Elizabeth and a Maori chief in their courts above the judge's head, which is meaningless in that court with Cindy Kiro and her flag that's contradictory and hypocritical of the way they're running this country, a sham, scam, criminal organisation. So we're taking them off the land because of that. A threat flag and taking over the country by what they're doing illegally and also the flag, flying the flag of the Union Jack while it's revoked. So there, that's putting the whole country in a shambles of law. The law is an ass in the courts and in the government. So the natives, Maori Crown King William IV, New Zealand flag must subject to the castle clauses six and seven be flown at full mast on the new government building in Wellington, in Auckland, Te Pito, East Cape, North Island, New Zealand, and Native Governor's Office in the following occasions. So I'm just putting our flag up over the top of Cindy Kiro's flag in any other flag they're flying in this country. Now, I'll just read this. This is this notice from the government. Revocation. Listen up. The New Zealand flag notice, 1986, SR 1986, 133, is revoked. Dated in Wellington this 18th day of February 2024, the Honourable Paul Goldsmith, Minister of Arts, Culture and Heritage. So there, that's the flag gone. The Union Jack flag gone, yet they're still flying it. That's highly illegal. So there, just, just wipes that right out. Okay, we'll go on a bit more. We've got invoices against all those politicians for the fraud scam that's going on. And they haven't refuted it. It's public. It's disclosed fully. And then we'll go along a bit further. Court has exclusive jurisdiction over all civil claims where the amount of the dispute exceeds 350000 That's all they go in their courts. We're going in the trillions because the Bank of England and the Rothschilds has stolen trillions. Joint and several liability. These are torts that I'm using in this high court. This is a high court book. Okay. So we're going on to the next pages here. I'm just going through the pages. Yeah. I won't
don't read it, I'll just say what we're going to go through on the 28th of June. And there's Alfred Mitchell with that other Irish fella walking. That's, that's, uh, that's Edie there, walking on the right-hand side there. And that's the photo of his dad, Eddie Mitchell, buried over there at Hanau Park in Hamilton as proof of Eddie Mitchell Sr. and his son, Eddie Mitchell, a bit older than Alfred Mitchell, but Eddie Mitchell's office is his dad's own old house in 4 Elizabeth Street in Beriscourt, 3200 Hamilton, where I was staying in his house with Alfred in the shed and Alfred coming in to sit behind me in the Zoom court hearings and contradicts himself where he supported me saying that Kira Waikato is a man and the moment he opened his mouth and said Kira Waikato Wharehere Manukau is a woman then I Drop the pound note on his head, and that's the end of him. And then Eddie gets the pound note in here, drops in his head too. So anybody that got the pound note on their head is going through Westminster Parliament. Okay? So that's the natives of England's soil land, and us on the soil land of New Zealand. So back in Manor Hamilton today, and hearing from people on the door, step made me want to share a few thoughts with you on what motivates me to run Eddie Mitchell Let Letram L E twenty four Manor Hamilton L E A Manor Hamilton G L E N Fame Dunkaram Dunkirim Mem, Kin Lo, Dom Man Mahia, Grenade, Rossover, Kitty Klo, Glen Carf, Mokil Yu, Kil Lagu, Tol Again, Ireland, C Less. Okay, that's Ireland. So that's an Irish fella. Must be in the Freemason. Okay, must be. I can only guess that this man here, right here, has to open up in this court or in Westminster or Australia court to parking paid and stealing 17 trillion from me and my claim to the head lease of New Zealand country. This man here is behind the Eddie Mitchell scam. Shame on Eddie, on his dad, to do that. To me, the native of this land, the original indigenous surname of this land, like Manukau and Kafaru, Uchutonga, Parapara, Mohini, and so forth. Their oldest names was here before them. And they came here, lived with us, and stole the land. There's the two here. These two fellows here. Gary Waterman, his ex-policeman in England, and 18 years of service, whistleblower now, on Bitchute that his case is this book here. This one is Gary Waterman's British Crown on trial in this Native Magistrate Court for Monday as well as this one, Eddie Mitchell. Okay, Corporates, court in the company's house. It's all fraud cover-ups in the company's house to change company names and and disappear them and make a new one and start the racket off again. See, so that's one big scam racket. And here's the companies here, 
I'm just going to read it out to you, but it's better to see it. You can blow it up on the website, moapowerhouse.world, and I put the page on my website and on Facebook. You can go and read this. It's better in colour than black and white. And uh, I'll just try and read it now. It's too small. It's too small. It's the... No, I can't see it. But anyway, it's the trust set up in Australia with this Brad Street, Dun Brad Street accountants that set these three companies up under the ABN lookup, companies lookup. When you go there, it shows you the companies that Eddie Mitchell has set up with these accountants and change the name and put the owner underneath the accountant. So the accountant's going to be wound up too. They're going to be liquidated. Everybody that's had anything to do with the biggest crime of the world century and mortgage lien and contracts. They've stolen my contract with Mohi Monaco and the Freemasons. So there. They've gone in as somebody from Taimui in where the Waikato chief was set up there but stolen documents espionage, stealing information that didn't belong to them and the money that goes with it so that's what we're recovering I'll get my my um, magnifying glass, where did the Waikato put my magnifying glass I can't find it now I have it here here it is. I'll see if I can read it. I'll put it on there. Now, here, I can see it now. It says there's three companies. The trustees A&E Investment Trust. The trustees for A&E Investment Trust. One four three eight one seven two three two eight five company number ABM. This next one is eight zero eight one two one two zero two one four. The trustees for A E Investment Trust in capital letters. The first one was in lower case. The second one is in uppercase, meaning corporate, and the lowercase is the cash. The ordinary person name, which is a company, corporate company, and the next company name is the trustee for A E Investment Trust in lowercase, which is another scam company that's the trustee is in always in lowercase is the one that picks up the money and the one in uppercase is the corporate name, not the money. That's the beneficiary and the smaller is the money. And the next one, no, this is a different company again, the other one. So those are the three under the A, B, N, Australia business um, number lookup. Okay, so if you go there, it's got your results for A and E Mitchell Investment Trust. Found more than 200 matches. The top 200 current names with active ABNs are listed below. Name by reference. Use A B tag to the cancel A B S no that's wrong. No, that's that's all I need to know is those company names. And if you go there and look them up and help me to find the money. Okay. All you Napoles. All you people in New Zealand, help me to find the numbers because I'm a pensioner 
doing all these business and investigation for 50 years to find and get to the bottom of who's stealing this country and whose pocket it's going into. Okay? One corporate here equals all the corporates in the world following the same pattern of theft as a servant. Saturday 15th, June 2024. I am challenging the government lens and Maori land titles, more important for my years of work to make them show me their land titles and where they got it from because if they can't match what I title I got them, my title is better and I got Scully contract and Native Magistrate Kingsbridge Court judge orders to go after Te Rawaikato Wharehiru Manukau contract that I have the Helensville Freemasons title to this whole country and no one can tamper with it because I am dropping a pound note on their heads so I got nothing from you what you doing and who you're seeing your barristers are not taking me to the claimant judge with the Manukau history of his and my Wainua family. No one has that title and it's in the hands of Scali Modular Banking Platform Systems, debt collectors. I have to focus on this job full time and keep going without changing my brain off the track. I am doing this for everyone who had enough of the corporate corruption and fraud and that's what Scarly does. Fraud and already your Maori titles and Lens titles are suspect. Got British Crown Native Magistrate Kingsbridge Court invoices on the land and Liens over the country until I see a title to the country, then I rule again against Maori and Lens land title, put back into the Maui Crown British land title where it came from, not Australia. Okay, so that's a little bit there on that page. There. I'll go to the next page. Gary Waterman is a British UK Crown Government ex-policeman businessman whistleblower on this page. That's him there to identify yet another scam company cover-up of self companies that are fictitious. And there's the invoice there on Eddie's head. There. That's for the 17 trillion right there. Okay? The British Sky Nova invoice company that goes to the debt collectors as proof of claim of the trillions in there to claim back to the native born people of the land, right through 250 countries in the world. Okay? And there's debt bill instrument there of King Ernest Augustus the fifth living in London 69 about years old bill debt instrument of 970 million trillion trillion Maui two bar pound notes chip coin stored value of King William the third 1694 bank act mortgage lien against the British corporations companies defaulted debts to King Ernest Augustus V, British, UK, Crown and Confederation of the United Tribes Chiefs Legal Inheritance. And there's the trillion pound note here with the two native-born chiefs of Aotea New Zealand, Te Rawaikato, Wharehiruhiru Manukau, and Hongihika, the Cook Islander, and the native Moriori. Okay, a Moriori chief, not a Maori, 
a Moriarty chief, and a Cook Island chief. Okay? No marriage in those days. They made it in their head. That's why you can't win in this court. I make it British court. So here, we go on to the next page. There's Charlie Ward and Gary Waterman there talking about company fraud in the company's house in London. And now the, the <coughs> city of London is gone and the Rothschilds have taken off to Germany. Okay, they've cleared out and run away with the money and the gold and the stolen wealth. So there, that's that there, and a letter to Gary Waterman asking for his assistance. He was going to come on to the show, but he'll probably come on the court hearing, the big one up north, because that will show him and Graham Ellett from here, ex-police uh, detective, Scotland Yard, from Britain, UK, or from England. And he's, um, I want him to team up with um, um, his counter-police man, um, Gary Waterman, in London, and go get this man, Alfred Mitchell, that's calling these chiefs a woman, stupid man, is stupid, and calling me this and that, and it's Eddie Mitchell's brother. You see the likeness, they both look the same, and see this circle here beside him? That's the confederation of chiefs. Nobody ever got that, only me. Got that CD with everything on it, okay? I've got that CD, but not this far here talking it up. Nobody's got that. Only me, with all the information on it, and they trace it on it. So this fella has been to the United Nations and taken the confederation there, and the whakameninga there, with the flag and got nowhere. You see, Eddie Mitchell paid for all of that. Him and Carla White from Napui went over, and they probably asked him, where's your title? and they haven't got nothing. They got no Mitchell name to their land that they'd gone and got, gone after. There's Eddie Mitchell's, one of his properties with his kids in it, that he's whacking them over, like this one here with a digger. He goes and smashes them all up and takes them out to um, um, Te Horo up um, in Hamilton on the farm that he bought for his father, a mansion and a big farm, and got a big hole and chucked all the houses in, 32 houses, and he goes banging over like this one, and paid for them with all the mortgage money and the cover-up companies, that he's got all that land through fraud and fiat fraud money, pound note. And there's the properties, these two here too, plenty of them all over the place. So I know where they all are, and we're going to seize the whole lot back to the people that he stole the 17 trillion plus off. And there's the letter there that he put together with the barrister and with the Freemason and made me sign it, but no one signed it as a counter contract. So it was only me that signed it, but they never signed or committed to it. So it's null and void as a contract with them to allow them to do what they want to do. And it's only to me, nobody else. Okay, so I've got space there for Eddie Mitchell to sign, but he didn't sign nothing. So I'm going to read it out so you can see. 27th of January 2023, John Wanoa, President of the Confederation of Chiefs and Natives of New Zealand. Lately, some people have asked me what happens if I die and who is going to take over the company's business. This upset me very much as I worked for years to set up 
the business with many important people. I respect first and for the people to join the business in a short space of time was too much for me not to consider other people's opinions. Yet I will leave to my own family or someone who can direct my life's work if I die. And so my old international lawyer, Mr. Yu Tai Choi, recommends I go see his lawyer friend, Edwin, who we shall refer to as Mr. E. I met with Mr. E and he explained to me the safest way to keep things in check is to set up an IBC account in Singapore to draw down funds that will go directly into my own IBC company in Singapore who will then distribute these funds to my principal company Na Atua Ewa Aotea Limited in New Zealand who will then distribute these funds to Na Atua Ewa Aotea Associate One Limited, that's the second company, directors, which included all participating corresponding companies that I have an alliance partnership with, who will have total autonomy funding expertise for project development help in New Zealand via Na Atua Ewa Aote Limited, including parent company, these, that's the parent company I just said, these directors can work, seek their own individual project developments as can their Blair and his son's GHB medical practice business or Honey Mason's Tikanga Law Law, LORU, LAW, Systems and Native Land Court, that Philip Teafitu and Philip Newton are going to do the land claims business and the Native Court Tikanga Law, LAW, LORE, on their marae, which I approve of holding it there on or in a district court or other venue with the 1834-1835 King William IV Confederation flag jurisdiction, 1835 Constitution, 1835 Municipal Corporation Act for the Native Lease Lands Title Ownership Equity legal instruments. It cost me $33,000 to set up this IBC International Business Company in Singapore in which I have a total of 28000 pledged. So I require another 5000 which is now settled. Thank you, John Wano, and my signature. There, that's what Eddie, I didn't write this, Eddie did. I, I typed it up for him in Braid Braid Library in uh, um, Bears Court, up the road, okay? So I put this letter together with Eddie in the library. It took ages to make this letter and to give it to him finally. And that's what he did to it. And he's mentioning that um, he, he, he went to a lawyer of Yui Tai Choi's friend, Mr. E. And Mr. E is Mr. Ed Mitchell. There's no Mr. E lawyer. Even if you ask Yui Tai Choi, has he got a friend called Mr. E? He'll say no. 
I haven't got a name called Mr. E. Mr. Eddie made it up in his head. He's Maori head. Did all this stuffing around with names and things here, just like a Maori. And then said other things in here too that are not true. I, I, I can go through it and find it. I'll just have a quick look because the video is still running. Um, I'll just have a look if I can see it. Now about the, the 5,000 of um, um, Philip Te Afutu and the $33,000 and he was asking me, Blair, Pony Mason and G Philip Te Afutu and Philip Newton for 5,000 cash each to register Ngātue Wā Ote Limited in the IBC in Singapore and he said, oh, because you haven't got the money, John, well, I'll pledge the money in and you pay me back. You pay me back 28000 for me registering your company in Singapore. Well, I rang up you know, to the, where they register the companies and it only cost 1500 not what he said, 33000 So there, a bit, bit of... Um, deceiving going on to steal cash off us and Blair didn't trust them one bit. He says he's not going to give 5000 to that fella because he won't account for it. And there, that's some of fraud of defrauding Philip Jaffiru of his cash that we have to get back. That's a, a public complaint against Eddie Mitchell for stealing 5000 that's supposed to register the company, my company, and the money's supposed to come back into my company, then into Philip Te Afitu. I didn't register the second Na Atue E Wa Oten Te Limited Associate number one. I didn't register it because I wanted Eddie to clear first the Na Atue E Wa Oten Limited company and bring the money back through into my company in New Zealand. Well, he ran off with it and put it in Australia, see? So I'm telling you a true story. It's up to you people, the public, to go after the money that belongs to you. Everybody in this country, everyone, belongs to that 17 trillion plus and 257, uh, 257 other countries affected by the same title and split. The money is split when we go and recover the whole lot under the chip coin tied to the Bitcoin um, new money system and ATM machine to get the cash, the pound note, two bar cash. Okay, we're going to print the money against these debtors and all that many missing money. Everything with trillions on their head is a debt bill like Michael Saylor, the big head of Bitcoin, saying debtors is the um, fiat money, is debt. That he uses debt money to pay for the Bitcoin. So the debt money is going to pay for the chip coin to recover all the fiat money scam that Bitcoin's tied to, and it gets clobbered in the middle of it as well because we're the ones that have got a clear title and the clear money without the scam and patented over the top of an unpatent pound note that the Rothschilds use to make the fiat money US dollar and that's all fraud because of that. Okay, just to let you know that Philip Tiafutu is got a complaint and Eddie Mitchell, you're the one that he's complaining that he got ripped off for something that you have not delivered on that document you've got to bring the money back here and it never got here because you dropped it off in Australia because I found that out. You put me through a lot of trouble to go and look for it and you're going to pay for all of that. Your trust is going to forfeit the whole lot and your lawyers and your bankers and everybody tied to you as the biggest scam money mortgage in the world. 
of land stolen wealth and instruments that you stole that don't belong to you. That money didn't belong to the Mitchell Family Trust. So you've got that on your head, Alfred Mitchell. You can't back out of it. You can't back out of it. It cost me 33000 to set up this IBC International Business Company. If I rang myself to set it up in Singapore, it would have cost me 1500 and it is saying it cost me as if I wrote it. I didn't write that. He did. He put all these words together to make it look like I wrote it. This is the scam man that his ancestors did the same thing to the Manukau tribesmen, the biggest tribe at the time, shot them to bits and stole their land and sold it through New South Wales, Australia, criminal um, convicts. Criminal prison convicts. The whole bloody lot of them in Tamihiri, that place in Hamilton, Tamihiris, the Tamihiris, Thompsons and the Mitchells. Both go together as biggest crooks in John Tamihiri. There, there we go, Thompson. Changed their name to make it sound like a Maori indigenous surname, but it's not. A lot of them are not. Okay? They're, they're all humbug. They're all humbug. And this is the scam that we've caught out. Um, and through my individual efforts and nobody else. And only me and Mohi Manukau and the Freemasons. Okay? There. You try and take this on, Dilip Rupa. Try and, try and get out of this on you, because you're going to get a pound note on you here, Dilip Rupa, because you can't put something like this together to convert people and land and resources into money. Cash, pound notes worth. Okay, one Moai pound note, or one British pound, one pound notes worth value is... 75,000 US dollars for a kg of gold bullion. That's how much the pound note is worth at the moment. So our Moai pound note is equal on that for now. It'll go right up when the water money hits the target and puts it up some more. Okay? So there's the two chiefs here, the Cook Island on the left and the Moriori on the right. And do they look like women to you? This stupid bastard here call this Tira Waikato a woman. And all the rest of Tainui are liable for getting this wrong. Okay? You are liable, Alfred Mitchell, and all your tribe, Tainui, that was supposed to be called Tainui Harbour, not Manukau Harbour. What happened about that? Where do you get your treaty claims? It always comes under Tainui and Manukau Harbour. Okay? You can't get out of it because your waka slipped into the Manukau Harbour. It was there before your Tainui came along. Okay? So there. And that's the Confederation of Chiefs flag there. Not a whakaputana. This says clearly on there when we were flying it and that board was at Helensville, Awaroa Native Magistrate Court Bank. The Awaroa Bank started, the BNZ Bank started here. Okay, and Muldoon and the BNZ Bank. So there, that started Auckland from here and the Freemasons gentry. I know all about it because it's in my head. Nobody can do this, Dilip Rupa. You haven't got this title to the land, native. You haven't got it, Dilip, so bugger off. You bugger off back to India. Go back there and get the hell off the land and stop talking about it because you've got a pound note on your head now for opening a big trap and telling me that you know better than me. No, you don't know the Freemasons will come to get you off the land too because these are their fucking documents, Dilip Rupa and Alfred Mitchell and Joe and, and Georgie Job and all the other stupid people playing around with documents. This one here is 
the right one that got your fucking asses on the land in the first place. You can't come up with something to counter this. And there's your debt bill here, Alfred Mitchell. A trillion pounds on your head. Georgie Job gets the same for killing the Moriori people on Chatham Islands. You, Maniapoto, kill them. I know everything about don't tell me I don't know anything about the wars. Okay? Who caused the wars? What for? And whose law? Okay? It wasn't Kikanga law. It wasn't Whakaputanga or Whakaninga law. It was British law. Okay? Does this look like a British flag with the red cross on it of England and St. Andrews? Yeah, it does. It doesn't look like a Maori flag. No. It's not for Maoris. No, no, no. And there I am with the hat on with the eight point star on my head, on the hat, and the rock behind of Tera Waikato Wharehere in Monica. His memorial to these documents. You stupid bastards. Mitchells, all of you, stupid bastards. That this rock here at Pohara or Punga Punga Marae is the title to the native country. Okay, that big rock, because the Freemasons took that on as the memorial for these fucking documents. Excuse the language, but that's how you talk to pirates. Fucking nuisance. Know too much about nothing. So there's Waikato on the Chatham Islands there. Waikato Harbour. Why isn't there Waikato Harbour here? because the Waikato Harbour was there first before the Waikato River came here next. When the Waikato people, Manukau, used to come here, then they made the Waikato and the Manukau, Ma, Ma, and the Waikato River. See, they settled on the river. Te Waikato, Wharehere in Manukau, settled in Arapuni, Cambridge, on the Waikato River, from the Waikato Harbour on Chatham Island South. Try and beat that, Alfred Mitchell. Try and beat that one. It's all over at Chatham Islands. Everything is there. Toi Kai Rākau and the other chief's names and the Orupuke Waka is on there too. The Waka that came here from there. So you fellas don't know fucking jack shit, Dilaprupa. You don't know all this deep history of this country and Britain. You're not from Britain. So how the bloody hell can you talk about that flag? Hmm? Dilip, how can you talk about that to this government? You're talking to yourself in the mirror. You don't know anything about the origins of titles and commercial contract corporation law. You can't put yourself in these boots. You have to go to school to learn how the country went together, by who, for what, the money. You can't tell me how you're going to make money after today when the crypto comes out, the Bitcoin and the Moe chip coin. It's going to rip everything to bits. Okay? And this one here, Toy Kairako, and his chiefs, um, um, that fellow from Ruatoria. What's the fellow again? Um, Pare? Um, Rabata? Yeah, that's the fellow. The, the fellow in Ruatoria that had his own Kotahitanga flag in Chichimua. I can't think of his name at the moment, but him. That's his tribe there under Toikaraka on Chatham Island. It's right there. The poo is in those names. Over there. Then the next one is the deed. Here's the fucking deed, Alfred Mitchell and Philip Rupa, right here. Whose name is on the deed? Hmm? Refa Refa Manukau. For Auckland and the Waikato. Right here. 1682 Native Land Act. 1862 Native Land Act of Refa Refa Manukau. The Bombay Hill and Waiuku and Pukekohe. Right across to Maraita on the east coast. And Cleveland. All that place Maraita Beach. That's all his one title, one title that the Rogans and the Clendons put his name on it as the native 
court of New Zealand and the Rakan Church grabbed it and made a lot of money from the fiscal envelope to give the government permission to use this native title and this Manukau chief. So, where's yours, Jalapurupa? What you talking about this land for? You leave it alone because you get out of the bloody road. Get out of the road. Otherwise, you're in this court with a pound note on your head, a trillion pounds on your head, liquidate you, your business out of business in Auckland with Cook Street. You're gone. Okay? And Michelle Coco can deal with you with Greg Cook and all those people. Tough. This is how business works when you've got fraud operating and you haven't paid your tax on that land, the lease. You haven't paid the lease to this horrible government in Wellington. They can kick you off the land with their contract and you're using this fucking flag for your sake. No, we're taking it off you. Michelle can do that. Okay? And Napui can boot you off. And Kingi Kaurua that signed all my documents and his daughter will kick you off. Okay? You go. Out you go. Because this is all about Kingi Kaurua and Queen Victoria and King Edward, Iruera, Mo, um, Kingi Kaurua, Iruera. There, I'm on his side because he signed my King William's documents because he saw something in it to get his land back. And it gets his land back to the Tauros and whoever else signed this document. Okay, so there's Kafaru there. I put this together, this plaque, and put it up to replace the stolen one that Sir Hugh Kafaru pinched with the crown of New Zealand and hid the blood thing away and put a memorial right over his gravesite up on One Tree Hill. And everybody walks all over it. That's how abuseful you are and arrogant and ignorant of our history and our chiefs. This big Waikato giant, 12 feet tall, big man that cleaned up all the tribes and unfortunately he was murdered. And there's the names of the tribes there. <coughs> Auraki and Raki, Raiatea. Um, I can't see. Where I can't see. Tuatahi, Wohi, or something. Anyway, it's there. In the colour where you can see it properly. And there's Georgie Job in here, and Alfred Mitchell backing what I'm doing in the native court, and then pulled out and went on their Maori government. You see how arrogant and stupid they are? They just went, came here to suck the flag. Well, go and suck bloody pennies somewhere else, because Napui is on this side. Okay, so that's the end of that hearing in there for Eddie Mitchell and the stolen wealth the biggest criminal cover-up in the world. And this is the British one that Gary Waterman and, um, um, and what's his name? Um, um, Charlie Ward and a few others that are uh, pushing this issue. And Stu Peters with um, um, Anthony James is with Michelle Coco and me. And that's a big twist of turn where Anthony James was there for the government in Wellington, switched sides and jumped into the native, which is okay, and come and join us. And Pakeas are just the same as us. They are all equal in this court. No one is above the law or anybody else because these are high court rules in here at the top end of corporations, flag, Corporation, the only corporate flag in the world, and Napui didn't have the instructions to go with it. We've got the instructions to go along with it for them and their whakamanua, which I am also in for many years with um, Nipi Orange in Kaio. I went up there first, and um, that's when he was with his wife, and unfortunately this he went the other way, and it didn't work out, but... I'm still with Nipi Orridge up there, 
looking down with Mary Manukau and the other chiefs, Hare Utu Tonga and Maki Tarawa from Te Arawa and um, anybody else in the same uh, system of the right people in the right places. So there, that's still going. The video is still going, which is good. And this one here is Chendi Kiro's writ warrant. This is the same as those in the High Court of Admiralty, Court Martial Law, and the War Powers Act, 1689 King William III of Orange, and his title, Mortgage Liens, Bank Loans, and Pound Note, and Bank of England Act over all corporations in the world that shares the 970 million trillion trillion pound note debt instrument. We are the creditors and this is the native title here. 448 pages here and the writ warrant here is I forget how many pages in this 76 pages I think something like that I'm just trying to see my page here anyway anyway I wish I had my computer I wish I was reading this book I'm just trying to see I'm trying to see my pages anyway that that stick a book that's about 70 pages in that one and 448 pages in the native title to this country, lease. Head lease is this one, Dilip Rupa. You don't have this. And there's two travel bags full of documents to go with all this. In all the court cases for John Key, Jacinda Dern, and all the lawyers and judges and policemen, 5,000 police get a trillion on each one's head for throwing me in prison for nothing and no case un unlawful imprisonment and then throwing me into the mental home. The police put me in there and tried to get rid of me and just come out of the hospital because my brother came to rescue me out of the mental home and then his daughter came to rescue me because they were keeping me in the hospital to go after my heart, try and kill me. See, just like Apui, and she's Te Arawa, but helping Ngāpui to take this government off our native land. Okay, take them off. Take them off, Ngāpui. Take them off land, because you didn't see sovereignty. So we're the ones talking to sovereignty on your behalf as the native, straight from Helensville, straight to Westminster, to wipe the New South Wales crown off the land and in 1902, Union Jack flag gave gone and revoked and gazetted on the 1st of April, took it off as being the flag of New Zealand, but they're still flying. See, that's contradicting their place of jurisdiction on the land. The flag is wrong, but they've got Cindy's little flag. That's the threat. We're going to use our flag as what you want to call it, a whakaputanga flag, or we call it a confederation flag for the money and you call it whakaputanga flag for the, your Maoris. You see, you look after the Maoris, I look after the native people. That's fine. Yes, still works. But when you're going to get the money, you can't trade with this flag as a whakaputanga trading flag because it's not recognised in the world as whakaputanga trading flag from Westminster because you didn't cede your sovereignty, which means you can't claim the trillion pound we are putting on the birth certificate as the sovereignty of your bond that the government uses a million dollars New Zealand worth each birth certificate. They're peeling it out and they are giving the benefit, which is only five, just 15,000 or 16 or 26,000 for a pensioner, and they keep everything up to a million dollars New Zealand for their pocket and they spend it on the stock market to make more money, and they make more money on top with spinning your deposit money going into the bank 10 times over, okay? They only survive on deposit money to make money. That's how you make money. 
I'm learning from those crypto experts how they make money work for you and use debt instruments to make fiat money exchange. So we're using debt instruments, these instruments with a trillion on it, to go up against them as chip coins, okay? And sell the chip coins in the ATM machine. Most chip coin, most crypto have got their own ATM and swap and you can get the cash from them and also Bitcoin can cash, give you fiat money cash because that's the only cash there and until Russia and BRICS put out their ATMs to sell their uh, UN, the um, BRICS dollar is worth 58 US dollars, uh, BRICS dollar, okay? Our dollar, our, 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 our pound note is worth 75,000 US dollars for a kg of gold. That's that, and then it's worth a trillion dollars as a chip coin. A trillion pounds, my pounds worth, as a chip coin coin beside the Bitcoin in their ATM machine. We just put it beside all the other cryptocurrencies going in each other's ATM machines. So we don't have to pay anything for the buying it. We can franchise it and, and buy the rights to use it in anywhere they are and they'll be planted in all the shops, all the dairies, all the places where money is exchanged, the supermarkets, and all those big places that get those machines, pay for it, I don't know how much, $300 or $500 for an ATM machine, and I can buy the small one that you can slide your card into it and give you the money in cash because we'll have our own Moai powerhouse bank cash money printed in cash we can print it no one's going to stop us because we are patented in Britain already okay we're using the King Tapia of Waikato right to use the patent under King William and William the third of Orange and our documents of the Freemasons if you haven't got the documents of the Freemasons you'll never get through Westminster because everybody hasn't got these documents of Freemasons, okay? You haven't got them or any native chief. That's a Freemason like Mohi Manka. He kept it secret to me as his successor and not his son, Eddie Manka, cannot claim anything from Britain. He went to the United Nations where stupid Alfred Mitchell went and got nowhere, okay? Eli Manikau came back here from the United Nations and supposed to have had money to start his Maori sovereignty government and got booted out because the federal government here, the Federal Reserve, booted him and his money out because it's dirty money anyway. The money from the United Nations is dirty money. Everything that's fiat is dirty money. It's fraudulent, and it'll prove that Eddie Mitchell is one of them. Just one is going to wipe the lot of them out, and he's the biggest case. Okay? A fucking Maori at that, and two Pākehās, Irish at that. The Irish is the eight-point star in Ireland. That's where all the big companies go because of that eight-point star on our flag. It's nothing of your business, Eddie Mitchell. You have no business in our contract, and you took the money from my contract, okay? None of your business. You don't have the documents to put it together, okay? You've got my sticks and the information in it. It's got my name in it, not yours. It's got Moi Manukau's name in it, with John Rogan's name that put the title together, and as a judge in Aorua Hellingsville. No Mitchells in there, fuck off. Nothing, just nothing. Just steal, 
just like Queen Victoria and the Rothschilds steal, just like Israel, Rothschilds own Israel, stole it off the Palestines, and we're going to give it back to the Palestines, and boom, them out. Okay? Both of them out. Those Israelis that want to go with the Jews can live there, and it's none of our business. But we help the natives to keep their land and take it off the Rothschilds and liquidate their business with this big green power note, okay? with the chiefs on it and Ernest Augustus. The real continuity of sovereignty to the banknotes and the Bank of England Act to a patented pound note and us, the partner, the first party partnership to the British Crown legal inheritance. The wealth, the, the gold, the land, the business profits and the foreign countries business as well. Everything that the Queen touched and ruined and took it for herself, just like Eddie Mitchell stole. Just an example of how far they will go with the Irish. This Irish, the Patricks, is my family, and the Rogans is my family there, and the Cosgroves is my family there. The white part in me, in my brain, Alfred Mitchell, it's my brain that's sticking these books together. Okay? Okay? I'm self-teaching myself from my white ancestors, and your missiles are thugs from Australia. You go back there so the abos can deal with you and bury you and your bloody head over there for stealing. You're a pirate, Eddie Mitchell. You're a pirate, Alfred Mitchell, and you're caught in this, and everybody knows. It's disclosed. You can't take it to court because the judge will say, we can't make money out of this. We can't represent this fellow because it comes back to us. It falls off on us. You've got yourselves and all the judges and banks and lawyers and politicians in the shit, Eddie Mitchell. You got them all caught in one house of cards. Drop you, drop the law. Okay? So that's what I'm saying, that the business of the corporations uh, with us and the flag, and you stole it. You stole everything I'm saying, and you pay. You pay dearly. The lawyers that are told the real estate, Bailey's not to sell Cook Street because I'll come after you. And they're going to lose their business and liquidate them as well as Ray White's taking and selling the motel at um, Rotten Point. I told them, don't you sell this property because you've got it on a grave site of Taha Wanoa. Okay? That's my ancestor there. You've got your motel built right over the top of it, just the same as One Tree Hill. Dug all the money cows out, put them in a flour mill, and crushed them up, and then put John Logan up there, and Campbell, John Campbell, Logan Campbell, up there to take the title up on One Tree Hill, and off it goes. Okay? That's what Mohi says. Get rid of it, John. Get rid of that off there, because this is my land. The Manukau, Moriori, got here first. And not you, Eddie Mitchell, and Alfred Mitchell, and Georgie Dog. Okay? You fellas have a problem with history, because all your wars is not going to count. All the wars is not going to get anywhere without Westminster and an original title to the land. There was something else I was going to say. I was uh, trying to think of it while I had it in my head. It dropped out now, and uh, I'll try and remember it because I want to say as much as I can with what's going to happen with Eddie Mitchell and um, Alfred locked up for life. Okay, on Guantanamo Bay. Everybody that's got their face in these documents all the way back, including Jerry Matafari, Andrews. He's not a Matafari, he's an Andrews. You see the surname, they change it. And Sheila Cartwright and Helen Clark 
and 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 so on. The list goes on, and and Karen Fox, all those people who defrauded me and my Monaco, and the treaty claim. All the treaty claims is a big fat scam. It's got no contract date to end their contract, and you got to have a contract date to end your contract. And the Maori government and the Whakamininga are fourth party in a two-party contract between us, the natives, chiefs, confederation of the United Tribes, chiefs of Aotea, New Zealand, not New Zealand, New Zealand. That's the right country name that was given in the first place, Dutch. Zealand. It's New Tirini is not Dutch. Where you got that from is your business. But the flag is not that. The king didn't say that. He said Confederation of the United Tribes of New Zealand and made sure it's Zealand to keep it Dutch founding. Dutch founding Abel Tasman and Dutch founding King William III of Orange and Dutch founding King William IV and King George IV. Okay, all those bits do count. If you got one out of place, you're not in the run for native title. Here, right here. If you can't recite this, you never can, you never will, you never did. So shut your fucking mouth up, Philip Rupa. Shut your fucking mouth up, Alfred Mitchell. Shut your fucking mouth up, Georgie Job and anybody else trying to outdo this lot. We're too old for you. That's it. Older is more sovereign to the land. Okay? Old Pakia, old Chinese, old Spanish, old anybody that knows the history. Okay, they got here first. The Chinese and the Spanish were here first too. Because they're in my family. Okay? The Hovels, the Ricards, and the Marcas and a few others with ginger hair. Okay? Ginger blonde hair. Panyola. See? So now this is how it goes. In a contract, you have a first party and a second party in any mortgage or any contract between two countries. We've got a country, New Zealand, and a country, Britain, UK, not England, Britain, UK, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England. That's Britain, UK, and that's holds our flag together. It's not a Queen of England. It's not a Queen of Britain, UK. It's a King of Britain, UK, and not a King of England. That's our contract is. Okay, so everything comes under the King of Britain, UK, King William III, and his Pound Note Act, 1694 and his Bank of England Act 1694 is our legal authority of jurisdiction of the Navy and the Admiralty of the sea and our dry land flag of King William IV. 1834 and Constitution 1835 and Municipal Corporations Act 1835 to pick up the lease on the land which was given to us in the first place by King William the Fourth. Okay? And King George the Fourth. Okay? King George the Fourth in particular. So that makes us the second party at that time to Britain, the first party, Britain, UK, Hanover. And now they've run away back to Hanover and left us on our own there with a broken marriage and we are left to run the business of the Crown in their absence of partnership as the first party. So now we are the first party and the native-born people of England first is the partnership to us and 
in the first place the land under Westminster and the land under the sold off City of London. All of the City of London is our title mortgage over the whole lot to seize the City of London Corporation and its assets of them back into the native of England's soil land and the British UK, Ireland, uh, Ireland, England, Wales and Scotland, that title to our flag to take the rest of those countries out at the same time. The Irish for the Eight Point Star and the Municipal Corporations Act of King William III of Orange, Battle of the Boeing in Ireland, and that's his title, the Irish, there where all the companies in the world, the big companies, have hidden their wealth there, the biggest countries in the world of hoarding all the stolen wealth is in Ireland. Okay, so that's me there and my Cosgrove lawyer's family and my Rogan judge's family there and me, the native, to drive the whole Pacific Islands, natives with the Maori, statues standing in London, my own family, raw Wanoa family, title to the land underneath his feet. Okay, that's what it means. Ahu Fenua is the Fenua underneath his Ahu. That's his feet. Okay, so there, wherever there's a Moai, in Singapore, in France, in Belgium, in New York, in Chile, in New Zealand, is our title. We don't have to try hard. We just go and stand there and claim it. Okay, we just claim the rights to the land in Singapore, for instance, because they're the centre of the Pacific Islands. Scammy corporations of the Queen and the Rothschild Banks. That's the hub of all the commerce in the Pacific is Singapore. Okay? So there, we're just sorting it all out. Uh, we are the first party. Andy and his people are the second party. Andy, Divine, Lee Kant, and unfortunately for um, um, McElhoran, he's pulled out. Him and the other lady, Tracy Wren, have said they're out of it because I'm stuck with the Freemasons. They've gone turkey and pulled out and don't want Frank McElhoran, you're out. You get the power note in your head if you stand in the road. You get that in your head because we're going after thugs and pirates. So that leaves you as a slave of your own British people. Your people cause all the trouble here in New Zealand. I went there, I stayed with you in the Globe Hotel and tried to teach you how we got ripped off, how you got ripped off too, and now you've changed your mind. You've changed your mind on me. You're backed out from me, so you're going pop in with your Charlie. He's dead now, and well, that's what I see. He might not be, but it says he is. But I don't can trust can't trust the British now. You can't trust the British anymore because they're shifty sands, shifting sands. So unfortunately, that's you out of the game, Frank. But Kevin Blackburn is in because he understands me better. You don't. You haven't got it in your brain. You're still protesting, which is not getting anywhere of getting your land back. And Kevin is a businessman. He's a businessman. He knows there's a problem there. And the policeman, that um, um, Gary Waterman, is I'm waiting for him to come on the show with us to show up the company sales. If he doesn't, I know he's still on that side. He's still on that side and he can stay there because he's caught up in the scam. Very difficult to get out. If you haven't got that, Frank McElheron, if you haven't got this title, native title to all the native countries in the world, affected by that. 
this is the Freemasons documents. There's nobody else, Frank, that put documents together that transfers your England into Crown ownership. You can't go and undo it without having one of those and being like a Freemason. If you want to beat them, join them. And then see if you can outsmart them at their own game, Frank. How the hell are you going to do it? I don't know. But anyway, I don't have to worry about you. It's one less. There's always somebody else that will catch on. Just like the young people to Bitcoin, they just picked it up and ran with it. There's a 12-year-old boy, he's a millionaire because he was just good at picking up information of Bitcoin and pressing buttons and made money out of it because he knew how to do it. Just knew how to do it. He didn't have a, didn't have a PhD, he just knew how to press the buttons at the right time. When the price went up and the price went down, bang, when he went and made millions. Okay, so that just shows you your people there, Frank, have duped the whole world. You've duped the whole world, Frank, and you've got a lot to answer for if you can't fix your own backyard. I was there to help you to fix your backyard with Andy and Kevin Blackburn and Sue Young and Lee Kent and everybody else. But Lee Kent was doing the Bitcoin or the chip or the crypto, and I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Now, I have everything to do with it, but I'm going to learn quickly. I'm learning how fast to do it, and it's all on my Facebook. How to be a crypto geek in a short span of time. I'll know this before long. It'll take me a month, and I'll have the whole thing wrapped up in a chip coin to match alongside the Bitcoin and slide past it. Okay, watch a mechanic at action, Frank. Just like how I was talking to you in the hotel that night we were there at Westminster. Okay, it's just replay and replay and replay enough times until it becomes real. You look how long it's taking. Look how long it took to figure it out because I've got no money and I'm on a pension doing this, for goodness sake. And I haven't got the money. If I had money, I would get way ahead. But there's a big, steep learning curve. You have to know everything, Frank. Otherwise, if you've got a little bit, and that's not enough. You have to have all the bits in the puzzle before it'll work. Some here, some there. Some in America, some in India come all over the place. They're all in the scam. Putin is running the crypto mate. He's the one with the brains that's running it. Not the Chinese, not the British, not the Germans, and not anybody else, but it's Putin. He's too smart. He's too smart. Don't get in his road because he'll flatten the whole bloody lot of everybody. Watch. Watch. You see, because he's not stupid. He wants to do trade business. And that's what we want to do here, Frank. That's what I'm trying to do on a sixpence. It's just a sixpence. I'm going to make all this money because I've never had money in front of me before. I'll find out how to make money. And then that's that problem out of the road. I know real estate back to front. I know mechanics back to front. I know tidal turbines back to front. I know how to fly back to front and dive in the sea under the ocean, back to front, and, but I don't know money. Okay, I don't know money. I have to learn fast. Okay, that's that. So there, we are the first party in Auckland with the courthouse, the native magistrate King's Bench Courthouse in Helensville, First party with Te Rawaikato Wharehere in Manukau, in Pohara or Punga Punga Marae in Arapuni, in Mangatotri Mountain, and the big rock title to this country's lease. Okay, there, first party in a country two party contract with Britain. The second party is the government of Wellington Crown, 
That's the second part, third party. That's the third party. The fourth party is the whakaputanga and the whakameninga, and the Maori government is the fifth party, and anybody else's party is the sixth party, and so on. They just stack on the end and of this organization of the Maori Crown King William IV Trust. Okay, we're a trust company, we're a bank, we're a trading company, we are a, um, um, a law-making company with the High Court of Britain, UK, and we're allowed to do everything I'm saying. We're allowed to do all that, and the crypto, we're we are playing a crypto game with the chip coin to match the new money system, okay? It's by tokens or Bitcoin or crypto, and you exchange it for fiat scam money. That's where the cash is, but we're going to make the cash out of the pound note, two bar. Nobody can stop that because it's set in stone. It's set in stone. It just needed restarting and carrying on now that we can get the printer and print like hell. Notes, not inflation. We don't have stock markets because we don't need it. We're a debt recovery business. Okay, debt recovery business. And the other companies, the corporations under the Queen and Charlie and William, are debtors. They are the debtors. They live on debt and dirty tactics. They are living in filthy, dirty circumstances of child trafficking and all the scamming projects that Gary Waterman is exposed on Finchley Avenue in London. All the scammy things that went on there, right in front of your nose, Frank, and you don't go that deep about your own people doing that to you with kids and screwing your ass out of them and spoiling their life and their next generation with jabs that you can't do anything about soon. They got the digital currency coming up and shut the banks and there'll be no more banks left. But you'll have to get your money cash, the fiat money, through the crypto ATM machines. And so we jump in the machine too to have the pound note cash. And Frank, you can go back and get something else and don't use these pound notes because you went against me. And and um, Tracy Wren has gone against me just like that Heather woman in England that I stayed with. Okay, that woman turned against me and Cumberpatch turned against me and Simon Bean turned against me and called me names and this and that and scammy this and scammy that. Then, now look at the mess they're in. They're just bling. Ignorance. Ignorance gets you going backwards and your country has taken over. Your country has taken over and you think that everybody is going to do that that came here from there? You have the people saying, go back where you came from because we don't want you and your things here. Okay? But I'm saying we're just going to use the law there to overcome the corporations with the corporation law in the proper way. It was given to us, the common law people of the land. Okay, it wasn't given to those elite mobsters and gangsters because they stole it. Queen Victoria and the Rothschilds stole it by taking King Ernest Augustus I out, the brother of King William IV and King George IV and their father, King George III, wiped their monarchy bloodline, continuity of sovereignty and snapped it in a Parliament Act of Parliament. And that's what we're going to do. Shut the Parliament here. Kick them out. We don't need Parliament anymore. We just need a straight AI Federal Republic government and one man to run the AI. And AI will do the whole lot with robots. You don't need those turkeys down there because it's a waste of money. 
when you are a businessman, you get rid of them, just like Musk did to Twitter, got rid of all the turkeys and left just the good ones. That's what we're going to do to the government. Get rid of them. Chuck them all off. The Maori fell off. All of them. Because they've followed the same fraud pattern all the way through and left me and Moi Manukau out of the treaty claim and gave the land to all the mongrels like Nada Glavish and Graham Latimer and all those Ngāti Whātua. They are not a real tribe. They are bits and pieces of tribe that the government of Wellington put together to screw every other tribe. Again, pipped them up against each other and took the peanut money as their reward. Less than 1% treaty claim. Once you're settled in your claim, that's it. No more. You can't come into this again because we'll have the records. We'll take all the records over and the, all the everything, the whole lot, and they get the debt before we kick them. That's the name of the game. Napui and um, uh, Michelle Coco and um, um, Rachel Hook, uh, Rachel uh, up north, Rachel, I forget her name now, um, so it's her, and the other ones there that are driving Napui for coming out. I'm just telling you some experience from an old head that's been up there in Hokianga for years with um, Morris Baker. He ripped me off and kicked me off his land in the little rotten church that he took over. But his brother is better than him. And uh, I hope that his brother has still got my documents there with the Uta Tonga title that Morris told, told um, his wife to chuck all my stuff in the rubbish because she was ro driving the rubbish truck and destroyed a lot of my stuff, including my dive gear and my scuba dive gear, all that, and all the rest of my documents are gone in the rubbish because she was working for the um, uh, council in um, Kaukau, or not Kaukau, in Paihia. She was working for the council uh, up there and driving the rubbish truck empty all the school rubbish bins and that's where I was staying with them with Morris and and uh, what's her name yeah with her and um, so she was good but Morris turned on me you see turned on me then I got booted off to Te Marae by those young bastards that um, um, the mongrel that's the chairman of the Waitangi National Trust they're getting the bill on the head for me, okay? They're getting the bill, all of them, all of them, that young prick and Hummer. They'll, they'll get the bill and whatever Napui wants to do because I'll be putting the money up for Michelle to um, cover um, Gregory and his global um, um, team and home guard because they'll turn good now and... Uh, um, got him back on track and uh, keep his um, whakapapa going with his wakanini can have that, that's okay um, and uh, there's a bigger enemy than looking at that as far as I can see because we are looking at tyranny, murder and genocide and also espionage and a few other things that you can ramp into it when these documents get it all in one place on next Friday, Saturday and Sunday because we're going to construct it together with Napoli because the Treaty of Waitangi is a contract on their land there and nowhere else in the country. That was put together, the 1840 Treaty there, which they haven't um, 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 ceded their sovereignty to the Crown in Wellington or the Crown in Britain, but nevertheless we're going to cover the British side to make sure they come out running themselves because the rest of the country would want to choose which way they want to go with the devil they know and us on the other side that has to prove we can go straight into the mainstream and operate but I'm saying we have got our side right with the confederation um, um, federal government that's AI, federal, Maori, federal, AI, 
each day government um, and uh, we have separate government for the Whakamania uh, just same as America has got a federal state same as Australia and Canada got a federal state but England hasn't got a federal state because they're headed here as a federal here and it's called the Maori um, Federation of Maori Authority see how they squeezed it around and turned it over to themselves it's nothing we're going with the confederation the federal government right over the head and dissolve them and liquidate their business straight out like that boom yeah big job for you uh, Michelle you look after that I'll look after your bank okay you are the bank I'm ready to sign with them we don't have to borrow money we just print it okay if everything fails we just go ahead because no one is refuted our document it's public it's gone it's a court document and high court rules they're all in there the high court rules and also what Gary Waterman is saying about the company's office in Britain is doing the same thing as the company's office in Australia and New Zealand, Canada and everywhere else in the world doing the same thing. Okay, so there, that's that. And I think I've covered uh, enough um, of how contracts work and how flags work. All other flags are in the sea and ours is on dry land, and King William III's harp of Ireland and his monarch flag is on dry land in Ireland. Okay, so that's where he bases his authority to us, and the jurisdiction is in the Navy of Westminster, which we put on the side as the other party marriage gone wrong and taken off to the EU Parliament, out of Westminster and left it for the Muslims to run the Magistrate Court of Britain. We'll go right over the top of them with this authority and the flag because it's a corporate flag over all corporates in the world that don't have a king's corporate flag to run a corporate business over the top of every other court business because we've got the original court of record of mortgage liens to mortgage lien debunk the whole lot to liquidate them with a mortgage lien and forfeiture and seizure warrant right over the top of them with the War Powers Act to take them out because they are threatened our business. They tamper with our business contract. That's it. And the money and the gold and all the prized possessions of the Navy law of King William the third and King William the fourth was the King William the fourth was the biggest navy in the whole world in Plymouth and Devonport, New Zealand and Devonport in Plymouth in the south of England, which is our connection to the Devonport here, the Devonport there, and our title to keep that Ulster and Munster going to Ireland. And that is in the history as well for our connection to Ireland and the eight point star of Municipal Corporations Act of King George IV, King William IV, and King William III. Okay, Municipal Corporations Act to pick up the rent on the land. Okay, so there, that's it, that's our authority and the Bank of England Act. And we take over the Bank of England and wipe them out, out of it because of the fraud, fiat money scam that's ruining the world with war, with abusing our War Powers Act of our King's authority. Charlie and William doesn't have a connection to the War Powers Act, and Biden has nothing either. They don't have a given flag from Westminster. They made their own up, and doesn't count. Okay? The fourth, fifth parties. America is a fifth, sixth party. Okay? The only ones close to us is the ones in New Zealand. Not Australia, New Zealand. That's where the contract is, the main contract through the whole world 
is on our dry land here at Waitangi, where the ship mast of the British ship is on dry land, the only ship in the world that's flying the British flag with our Confederation of Chiefs flag, and this government Wellington is tampering around with it, our contracts. That's, we've caught them in the act. We have to catch them in the fraud, then string them and kick them out off the land. That's what we're doing in Apui. Listen up, because I didn't say this for nothing on this video. It's an affidavit of truth that the government is a threat to us native-born people on the land. That's everybody, every creed, religion, and tribe or individual is the same. Equal rights. No law above the other. And the law was given to us, the chiefs of this country, the first sovereigns, then the second sovereigns, then the third sovereigns, then the fourth sovereigns. In succession, the older ones come first. If you're an old person, that's you on your own two feet, that's in your family, that's keeping it alive and going, that counts too as native, born on the land, and you're in with us with the claim of stolen money, 100% plus, not 1% or less. That's what the stupid Maoris accepted, less than 1% of what was stolen Maori land. Well, Edie Mitchell is stolen Maori land. We're going for 100 plus percent return of stolen land, Edie Mitchell, the whole bloody lot. Eh? And Bailey's real estate, the whole bloody lot. One shot, boom. That's why that big pound note is so big, to rack it up, because that's what your thugs did, rack the bill up. Okay, I'm doing the same as you thugs and pirates, racking the bill up, because we're allowed to do that. It's our business, none of your business. It's none of your business stealing our contract, Eddie Mitchell and Alfred Mitchell. It's none of your business, Dilip Rupa, poking your nose into our flag. That's got nothing to do with you and India. You're just like an Anne that Governor General came here and took the bloody land off Sunakora that went there to try and drive the Confederation of Chiefs and got sung down off the Marae because she's a woman, not a male chief. You see? So that was Napui that did that to her, but however, that's Napui's call because it's her land, their land, not hers. It's Napui's land. They can do what they like on their land. And that's why I say I go along with what they're doing as a hapu, not a ihi, as a hapu. Anybody that's got nothing a bit off in this game with the chip coin and that money system of ATMs. We'll get our own ATM yet, but I'm just figuring it out. I had tag pay before, or Scarlet in France. You see, I was going to use them, but it, they could jam us up because it's under the European government and parliament. And those thugs that run the courts over there can swamp us and kill us all. No, I'll leave that one right out and we'll start printing the money. Uh, Michelle, that's it. That's our business. We have the right to print the pound note and to sell it to people in exchange of the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin currency and chuck the fiat pound and its US dollar out. Okay? Chuck it out of there. Chuck it out and just go along until you overtake them and out of business. Just liquidate them all eventually. I'll show you how to liquidate with mortgage clearance. Okay? I'm pretty good at it. And the same with the Bitcoins. I'll be pretty good at it too because I'm just learning fast. The brain is going good. It's just my stomach. That's all that's left. My feet are good now. They're going, bouncing up and down. Saying to the brain, come on, get on with it. I'll carry you wherever you want. The stomach says, no, I need a good feed of oysters and mussels and kinos and powers and crayfish. 
I won't move until you get those for me. Please, hurry up. And that's what's wrong with my stomach. I'm eating everything I boil up some of the things my stomach says, not good enough. I want something better than that for my brain. My brain needs more fuel. Okay, you want to make hydrogen, you go and get into the food. Okay, not the music so much, but the food. I like my music. I got those girls playing the instruments. They're very nice. Nice and smooth and caring music. Not just bash, bash and all that hullabaloo junky music because it's not looking nice and calm and beautiful to listen to and quite changing guitars. I love guitars. I love music. I was wanting to play the Fox in one day again and I'm going to join some people and have a little sing song and enjoy a bit of diving. I'm going to go back to diving again and make myself pretty fit to be a manager of a business. This important and best to have a good health. That's why I came back here to go to my old swimming pool and gym and work my way back up from being just about dead and no ambulance. I've made my, my um, um, complaints there of the ambulance um, gentleman, my niece. I, I, I made the comments that I don't like what they did to me and left me for dead at the bottom of the cliff. And I told Maria, that's my um, support from the hospital there today, oh, I should have said I'm dying and I can't move because my heart is stopping and I would have had the ambulance here in a hurry. But instead I said I got a sore leg. So they put it in the lower priority and didn't come. But it will ended up as a heart problem, a gut problem, a gut problem and a, um, a, a kidney problem. All that wrapped up and they kept me in the hospital longer because they were saying I've got a heart problem and they would have ripped my heart out and killed me off. And no, nah, shit no, you know, get out of here. So thank you, gentlemen, for getting me out of there because you know they're going to get rid of me to stop me from talking and exposing them. Too late. It's too late because everybody knows now where it's all going to, where it's all going to come to a stiff end of the corporations and their thuggery. Frank McLaren, I'm not finished yet with this that I went to England not for nothing. I went there to try and solve your problem there with no queen, head of the state, head of the class, and put myself as a head to replace Queen Elizabeth because nobody else can take that job. Only us to nom nominate myself in there by my chiefs here at Waitangi and King Toto put me in that position with my chiefs. Okay? I didn't get going there for nothing. They said, go there, sort it out, then don't come back to be sorted out. You see? So there. The Queen's gone now, so it just leaves me on my own to make decisions that I trust. And the Queen Victoria Trust is now the Maui King William IV Trust. The Maui Crown King William IV Trust takes over that Crown Corporation of the Queen because there's nobody else that can succeed to it and it's worth value and the king's worth value as well and add that to the fraud queen we're going to dissolve her business because the queen's crown corporation is a fraud scam criminal organization of pedophiles and pirates on the high seas they're acting pirates and doing bad things with our law Okay, so there, that's all. That's all uh, I want to say for now because I'm going to have some dinner again and uh, have uh, um, some fresh um, filtered water now that I've got plenty of filtered water and, and, and uh, keep myself um, fit and try and sleep a little longer because I got up at 3 this morning and took off and did some more work 
with the Bitcoin all the way through and I've spent hours on it watching the video and posting everything on my site I just post and carry on and then pick it up later on to do something with and read and understand and play it backwards and forwards till I get it. Once I got it, I got it. And put it together. Snap the lot together, computed it all out, out of 970 million trillion trillion pound note, I'm breaking it down to a thousand trillion as the first part of the chip coin to sell to the public for free, okay? With no cost because we are a credit company that credits new members. Okay, once you join up in your country, out of 257 countries, I've got them there. I've yet to put them on my website and change my website around a little bit more. I can't get someone to do the website because I have to be there with them to put it all together. And I'll wait till I get things going. Then I'll get somebody to do it because it takes a long time to put it back together. The British and the New Zealand government wrecked the whole thing. They pulled it all to bits and took it away. Um, you look at my website now, you'll see a lot of missing videos and a lot of missing information because they're dead in jail. They're spoiled it and I just want to make some more because too late now, I've got it out there. Okay, so that's, that's all um, I want to say. And um, I've got to get this other spare man title for Michelle. Coco and Michael, that title, native title, and this one here has got to go to Britain, this one, okay, but I've got to find someone that can do it, that's going to be fluent with what I'm doing and not afraid to take it on, because I don't want anybody being arrested for these sort of um, sensitive um, information. Okay, I can do what I like with it because I'm used to what I'm saying and doing and making public statements like this. Okay, so it's up to you, Alfred Mitchell and Eddie Mitchell to say something, otherwise somebody's going to make you open your mouth and say, where's the fucking money that you're stolen for your trust and your family? Why are you living high life and we're suffering with nothing is because you and your ancestors stole everything, okay? It's our day in court because we can't get into court and win our case in your court because your judges are covering up. Your police are covering up the fraud, that scam you're doing and you're not going to get away with it, Eddie. You're not going to get away with it, Alfred. You're not going to get away with your job, with your murder from your people, money reporter. You're not going to get away with it because I was with Mana Tikanawa, he's from Money Porto, in the Maori Land Court in Lodahu for donkey's fucking years. And I was with him all the time on a computer in there, spending a lot of time going through all the titles. And that's why I know so much about Maori Land titles and who's screwing who. Eddie Mitchell, you and Alfred put the documents together in the Maori Land Court and also the Te Ture Whenua Act, which is, which is something given by Britain that is gone now because your government in Wellington has disbanded themselves from the Union Jack, no connection to Britain, and you make your documents null and void because you've got no connection to the monarch in England because Charlie, his name is in your courts on your documents as King versus defended and his photo and his face is not above the judge and so that's not true what your courts are running is not a true indication of a monarch from Britain UK because you can't go and reinvent yourselves when you have dislodged the British Union Jack flag and thrown it away and put your own flag up that's nothing to do with Britain and what you just did to, to um, um, disloyal to the British um, people and the 
army, battalion, Marwell battalion, that went to war under the Union Jack flag. And you just threw it away and put your own stupid bloody flag with a crown on top and your Japanese name, Kiro, and you made yourself Maori with Nakahine, the biggest crook, jabbers, and vaccination of murdering our people, and the graphene oxide inside the jab is the thing that's killing the people, and you are responsible and liable for that murder. And you're in it too, Albert Mitchell and Edie Mitchell. You're in all that scam too, because you're using the government rules to make your mortgages and laced with all what Cindy Kiro has done with the iwi Maori of Ngāti Hine um, 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 Health Trust Company, private company, corporation, and also the Waitangi National Trust Corporation, private corporation, and Ben Dalton, and also um, Jade Morena, the CEO of Ngāti Hine Health Trust. Those two companies are promoting the jab, the COVID-19 injection, poison into the bodies of innocent people and killing them. They're dying and not proven to be safe. And Cindy Kiro is, is in there with it, she, because she's with Ngāti Hine as a Maori of Ngāti Hine. So there, tied in the fraud, caught you. I have caught you myself. Okay, I have put the documents together for there with Gregory Cook and his home guard to go on the marae there and wind you fellas up. And that's what we're going to do on the 30th, the 28th, 29th, 30th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, next week, is to wind you all up. Wind the whole bloody lot of you corporations up with Eddie Mitchell and the biggest fraud case real estate fraud in the world. The biggest in the trillions. It's more than 17 trillion. I can tell you that much because I've worked that out with the OPPT and um, Karen Hudes was the accountant in the um, um, World Bank. Okay, accountant in World Bank. Karen Hudes was battling with me at the time with Nilo Berry in England that was doing the same as um, as um, um, Karen Hudes and somebody else in Spain too, doing the same thing and as me, trying to claim the wealth of the Queen Victoria Trust account. Okay, so there. And also you had um, Matt Taylor in England to act as King Arthur, claiming the crown, and also Jeff Foley in Australia. I go for him because he's from Wales, and I support him. His face is on my documents as a legitimate king that I wanted to take over at the time that Greg Hallett was going after it on the Queen Victoria side too, but I think somebody murdered him, and that was the end of him. And Michael Hamilton in Australia. Okay, him too. And um, I, I saw him and put him on my documents as a king that was going to take the throne as well. So there was a few contenders for it, and somebody else too, a woman that was there too. She was one of them as well that wanted to be the, the reigning monarch of Westminster and that fell apart too. They all fell apart because the Freemasons stiffed them and um, the Rothschilds stiffed them and the Illuminati stiffed them and the Vatican was running England at the time stiffed them and the Church of England and and Queen Elizabeth stiffed them, and you've got all those tentacles of the octopus that's 
linked to the whole mortgage fraud. Okay? So there, that's that. And um, um, I don't think I have to say any more. That's enough for now. And I'll just turn in this video and we'll catch you maybe one or two days later and then put this with these documents when I send them in the post on the stick and I'll put the videos together of the latest videos that sound this alarm of what's going to happen here in New Zealand. We're taking our country back, people. We're taking it back because it's not going the way we want it to go. And we don't want another country to control our country anymore. Okay, we're taking our country back and every other native country back to the natural born people of the land and not some cottoned up cock-sucking bloody bitches that are sucking the devil and daylights out of you in taxes. Okay? So, there. We are watching Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, um, that's the name, that fellow Kiyosaki, and him saying he don't pay no tax, he makes all his money from death. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use Robert Kiyosaki's method of making money out of death. And unfortunately, he's playing around with fiat money that makes him a debtor too. Everybody that's sucking the goodness out of taxpayers and ordinary living people that are paying for the lifestyle of people like him that he's got 15,000 properties and God knows how many Edie Mitchell has got with 17 trillion and the whole of bloody New York or the whole of Queensland that we would have gone right into it with this. It will just seize the whole lot from when we get this Brad Street and done in Brad Street accounting firm in Australia and wound them up too. Okay, I took two lawyers on there, but they wouldn't look at it. It sounded good at the start, but then they must have looked at it, got too much in it. There's too much exposing everything. And even the law in Australia, the 1986 Constitution of Australia is running off our Constitution here. The fraud Constitution of New Zealand is used in Australia and the 93, 1993 Native Land Act is running over there is from here too. So they are borrowing these fucking Maoris over here titles for Australia the same as Eddie Mitchell doing the same thing. You're not that fucking clever, Eddie, because I've been in it too fucking long than you. I know all your game. You don't know my game, mate. You don't know enough. I know everything that you don't know. I'm getting to know everything that you know, plus on top of it, the money side of how you got your money and how you're going to lose it. Okay, with the law against the law. Okay, so there. <coughs> there. <coughs> That's the end of you, mate. If somebody else don't get you first before me. Okay, I'm going to try and steal the money and shift it. If your accountants got whiff of this, they'll go and shift the money. But we'll follow it along where it goes. Because you're admitting to it when you don't say anything. If you don't refute what I'm saying on this video, Eddie Mitchell and Alfred Mitchell, you're done. Your day in court is happening right in front of the whole world watching. Okay? You can't say anything because it's true. What I'm saying is the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God, Moai statue is all about the real up here, up straight up there watching you thugs at it, okay? You're thugs, just like what Blair Ingram is saying. Don't trust you fellas. That's what he went to school with you, Alfred, and your brother, Eddie, and known what he's like all these years. And he's going to say something that is true what I'm saying. Don't trust you too, pirates from Australia. Okay, you can go back to Australia and the abos will whop you up and do something and put you on a pole and stick you up there. 
Okay? For everybody to see what a corpus thief is, that's ruining this country and that country because you are self-interested in your own self-interest. Okay? And nobody else's. You look after yourself and fuck anybody else. Okay? You're going to get this thrown in your face on this weekend next week. Okay? So, there. And you, Dilip Rupa, if you're watching this video, Mike, and take it from me, you're going to get booted off the land, Mike, because you can't say where you got onto the land from and you haven't paid your tax bill to your government in Wellington, Mike, that's yours. You can't go in this Confederation of United Tribe flag business because you've never been to Waitangi with me. You've never been to the Confederation Chiefs meeting. You stayed in your restaurant and expected the Chiefs to go and see you, you bastard. No, you get out. You get out because you're just sucking at Mohi Manuka and our history. You weren't here as a native of this land, indigenous land. Okay? You're a Rupa and not a native chief. Okay? That's it. You can't make yourself into a Maori or anything else because it's got different, different jurisdiction. You're an import, and that's the end of that, mate. Don't talk in front of me, because you'll get the pound note on your head. Well, you're going to get it on your head anyway, because you turf me aside. So you're just like Alfred, get a pound note on your head, and that'll stick there for life. It'll be in the history books, mate, everything I'm writing, and, um, and that guy, that Chinese guy that wanted to... Peter Pan, the Chinese guy I met in, in Hong Kong, he wanted to be the, the ambassador to New Zealand for Hong Kong and, and write my stories up. Well, I'm writing my own stories, mate, because he's not here. I haven't got the time to tell him, but he can see what I'm doing and jump in and do something because when I was dropped off unceremoniously by the British Crown in Singapore to find my own way back, my kids paid to get me back here and they are not forgiving of what they did to get me back home and never believed what I'm doing because they said, oh, stop what you're doing because you're going to get in trouble again and end up in the mental home. Well, I was close to being in the mental home again and that's where these thugs and pirates and bastards wanted to put me and Edie Mitchell would have wanted that too because that's the way it was looking. Until my niece said, oh, uncle, we're going to get you out of here. She, you got to get out of here. Don't stay here. We'll get you out because I'm not signed off out of the hospital by the heart doctor. See, they're doing their tests here with me at home with the White Cross <coughs> um, doctor. You see? So they are not signed off yet until they're happy. I've got these drugs in me to stuff my fucking brain up and my body. Yep, once I get back to normal, off the drugs I go, and back on normal stuff like Brian Whitman that can look after me as he was to um, better than the doctor and the medication. Better, natural. Okay, so there, that's enough. I'm going to rest now and cut this one off. We'll see you later. Have a nice evening and a good weekend. We will catch up with you next week. And Michelle Coco should be home tomorrow from Tsukuri where they buried uh, Jerry Otimi and to his family that didn't care about him. They put him in the grave and got rid of him and put him in a mental home themselves. So they've got bad vibes in their family down there to do that to Jerry, my mate Jerry. But anyway, we're on different paths and doing chasing after the same thing. And um, she's there to pick it up and carry on with it and I'll help Michelle as much as she'll help me to make this work with Napui. Napui, you're the king makers up there. That's what I'm saying. I'm there always for you. No matter what, we put our differences aside, animosity aside, and get on with the job of taking our country back and our land and our 
way of life. We want to be left alone to follow our way forward for our mokopuna and everybody else's mokopuna living here in this country and have our own system of lawmaking and every other native country hopefully will follow us as a template for them and a blueprint for getting the hydrogen economy going. That's still sitting there. No one's got it yet. And uh, we're going to go straight into that to get the economy going. That pulls over $55 billion a year on each bridge, and there's 60 in the Pacific and more around the world. We will give them the franchise rights to build it themselves. Saves us shipping it all over the place from China. And um, so we can join all those countries, and they make an income from it straight off. Okay, so that's how this is going to go. Bang! Off! Out! And I've never had money before, but it's a good feeling to go and start to make money. That's what we're supposed to be doing long ago with our chiefs. They had the pound notes where they were doing all right until the Pākehā came along and printed the notes out. So we're going to do the same to them, print it right in the front of their face. Print the money and the real money, not the humbug money, the real money, and stick it to their face. Okay? Napu, you got that? You got that? We don't worry about anybody else. And your tribe, um, uh, Michelle, uh, neutral, and uh, don't take sides. That's it. You just do your job. I'll do my job. Napu, you do their job. And that other fellow, Johnny Logan, can do his job too. And be quiet and get on with it. And do the right thing. Get your land back. Okay? You got that? Right. We can talk about things another time and don't knock each other around. Okay? See you later. Bye.